The following program is paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. The 3030 Challenge. Study the Bible for 30 minutes a day for 30 days and see how your life changes. Sign up now at JoyceMeyer.org slash 3030 Challenge for encouragement and how-to tips. Welcome to Enjoying Everyday Life with New York Times bestselling author Joyce Meyer. On today's program, Joyce will be teaching from her series, Battle Strategies for a Victorious Life. Do you feel like you're struggling through life and barely making it? It's easy to feel that way when life hits us hard or difficult challenges come our way. Our enemy, Satan, doesn't want us to enjoy life to the fullest. His mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. However, as Christians, we know that God has already defeated Satan, and we can live a victorious life. God is on our side. Now here's Joyce with today's series, Battle Strategies for a Victorious Life. I wonder how many people actually walked in here today that you could say with an honest heart, there is nobody, not one person that I am mad at right now or offended at. Come on now, you've gotten quiet. <laughs> I think we should be able to go to bed every night and say, God, thank you that I'm not mad at anybody. Are you quiet? Quiet. This is a serious issue. You know why? Because in Ephesians 4, it tells us plainly, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't give the devil any such foothold. So when we stay angry, we're opening a door for the devil. <laughs> don't go to bed angry. Come on, I remember those years, dumb, 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 when I would go to bed mad at Dave. And I mean, I could sleep on the seam of the mattress because <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want him touching me. I'm not going to touch him. <laughs> and then he'd have all the cover, and I, I'm, not, I'm not asking him for any cover. Then I'd just lay there and freeze all night. <laughs> he had a good night's sleep. And what did I get? A headache, a stomach ache, tired the next day from no sleep. It's stupid. The stuff we do is stupid. It didn't change Dave. Dave is still the same. It's just now I've changed and the stuff don't bother me anymore. Come on, can I get a message across to you? God is not interested in changing all the people that you think bother you. He brought you here to change you so they don't bother you anymore. God's not going to get rid of everything in the world that aggravates you. He wants us to get to the point where it doesn't bother us. Come on. This is what spiritual maturity is. You know what? The amount of time that we're all here, let's don't blow it and be miserable all the time over stuff that we can't do anything about. You didn't hear me. You can't change your husband. Well, I'm going to try. Well, <laughs> go ahead and I'll see you next year and tell you the same thing all over again. <laughs> Come on, I remember with the kids growing up, if you're going to live in my house. <laughs> Come on, how many of you have given your kids that speech? If you're going to live in my, my house. <laughs> well, they did live in my house and... I guess we helped them some, but I've got great kids now. You know, just because your kids don't do everything the way you'd like them to do it, that doesn't mean that they won't grow up and be great human beings. Teach them right. Give them a little bit of space. All of my children are here but one, and uh, two or three of my grandkids are here, and we have, we have a great family. And, you know, I mean, I had kids, I'd look at them, I honestly didn't think they'd make it. 
I mean, I thought there's no way that you can go out in the world and live. You will not make it without my daily moment by moment advice. Come on, who are you mad at? You're not justified in it no matter what they did to you. I'm sorry, but that's Bible. No matter what they did to you, you are not justified in not forgiving them. Now, come on, don't get mad at me early. <laughs> because it was the devil working through them to start with, and the only way you can get the devil back is to forgive and pray for them. And as far as judging other people, the only way, the only thing we really should do when we see a fault in somebody is pray for them, not judge them and criticize them. How many of you think if you put more energy into just praying about these things, things might go better? Number two way the devil tries to deceive you. He wants us to be proud and think they think again, think that we know it all. We know more than everybody else. Come on, how many of you ladies have a husband that's never wrong? Yeah. Well, I won't say anything else because mine's here. <laughs> and you know, fault finding for that matter is the fruit of pride. You gotta be so careful that you don't think you're superior to other people. Maybe you do have some strong gifts and talents and maybe you are faster than other people or you learn quicker than other people, but that's only because God gifted you in that way and you didn't get to pick your gifts and they didn't get to pick theirs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind and lean not to your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. And I love verse seven, do not be wise in your own eyes. Not to be insulting, but you're not as smart as you think you are. And you know what? You can have all kinds of education and have no wisdom. Man, I've been wanting to write a book on Proverbs and I didn't know how in the world I was ever gonna write a whole book on Proverbs because it talks about probably 200 different subjects. Last weekend, I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna sit down here and start. It's amazing. A lot of times with God, you just gotta put your foot in the water and then he goes to work. Well, I'm on chapter seven now. And, but the thing is, is it's wisdom. <laughs> the reverential fear and awe of God is the beginning of wisdom. Well, where did that go? What happened to the fear of the Lord? You know what the fear of the Lord is? It means that you, you recognize God's power and how strong he is and how sovereign he is to the point that you would rather do anything other than offend him. See, that'll keep you from talking about other people. That'll keep you from getting full of yourself and being proud because we have a, not, not a, I'm afraid God's gonna hurt me but a reverential, I know who God is. I know what he can do. I know that he means what he says. It's the beginning of wisdom.